Hello everyone and welcome back. So I've been asked over and over again um, not only how I did this one but also to turn it into a tutorial. So that's what I'm going to try and do today for you. Um, I actually had to redraw the entire thing which is fine. I just copied it basically. Um, this is a free page for you here on Patreon, and it is also a page in my new book coming out, Gemstone 6, Volume 6. If you have a Patreon code, so make sure you use it if you want the PDF, which will be on my Etsy site. If not, you can get it off Amazon as a physical copy. Unfortunately, I can't do codes on Amazon. They don't want me. Sorry. Alright, so. First things first. So that you have, you know, my reference over here. Um, it's very, very yellow. And then I come up into magenta. And then do, uh, I believe, deep indigo or dark indigo. Whatever the color is called. Because I only have the little 12 set. So I don't have like a ton of colors that I get to use, but I do like the ones that I do have. So let me show you how I do this. Now I know that I want most of the lightest part here. So because Ink Tense is basically like watercolor once you wet it and you're able to move the pigment around so much, when you're looking to put the reflected light or the lightest part of it, you just leave it blank. And so I'm going to go around where I want the lightest part. Just like that. And it doesn't take a lot because Inktense is very intense. Um, so I'm just going to go around it. Because we'll start in there and kind of bring the yellow in so that it softens it all out and kind of glows. And that's what we want. Okay. And then I've got my magenta. Oh, no. Magenta is a polychroma. Excuse me. This one is fuchsia if you're using ink tints. And I went ahead and just went around the edge of it over here and down into here because we want you know as always on gems to have that edge of darker than the rest of the gem even by the reflected light so that it goes down and away from us. I'm just going to bring the fuchsia up here. And then I'm going to grab my, that's not it, deep indigo. So I was right with that. Deep indigo. Okay. And going to go along this top edge and fill in this part here. And it looks very, very dark, and it is, which is good. We want that to help bring in and kind of make our shadow just really pop. Okay, here's where it gets fun, as you guys know. We get to... Get her a brush. I have a brush. I know some people use um, like the little aqua brushes or whatever. The ones that are filled up already with water. And I have a couple, but I don't really like them because I don't feel like I can control how much water I have on there. Whereas with a paintbrush, I feel like I can. Oh. You know, that's just personal. Anyway, so I start here in the middle with the uh, part that I did not put any color on. And we're just going to work our way around 
so that it has that color. And just, it all fades softly together. And then work our way out from there. Just mixing as we go. Don't want to mix too much because I've still got the yellow up here. So I've got to... Really get nice and wet. Okay, now we can go into our fuchsia and just blend that in. And um, I'm doing all of this on watercolor paper, by the way. This is not create space paper and get that fuchsia nice and blended and then go up into that deep indigo for the shadow And then if you want to go back and blend this some more so that it's less of a harsh line, you can do that. Just like that. Ta-da! Um, if you want more color, go in and put more color. Um, you can go right on here. It does not have to be dry because these are already wet pencils, you know, basically. It's just pigment in pencil form. You just go in here and get it wetter and work it a little bit more. And then some yellow on there. I'll blend it out a little bit. This is actually a pretty cheap watercolor paper, so it's a already like stop using me. And that's it. I let mine dry and then I went ahead and put, as you can see over here, um, little cracks and veins in it. And I do that with polychromos um, or just any color pencil. And then I put my white highlights on up there. So let's go ahead and do it again over here just so that you can see it again. Remember I want to leave My reflected light as white and go around it so that we can bring it in and I'll go slow so you can see it. Bring the color in is what I mean. And then got our fuchsia. Plenty of pigment on there. Go around, bring it down here. Around the edges. And then we have deep indigo. And work it right here on the edge. And up at the top is a shadow. down on this edge okay and then grab our little paintbrush over here and I do get this entire uh, spot wet and then I just start going in little circles and fading 
color into it so that it's a completely smooth transition and work out on each color and go into the fuchsia start blending that out just like that And those little, little circles help to just blend it together nice and smoothly. Go up and grab the deep indigo. Which is the blue and the pink will turn into purple. And there we go. Okay, this one definitely is still wet. You can see even as the paper is kind of ridged up right there. That's totally cool though. Um, let's see. What else did I do on there? It's been a little while, so it's kind of hard for me to remember at some points. Um, I believe that all of the I think this back part or whatever was done with this color which is bark which is basically just like this weird brownish color however I might have done it with baked earth that's probably the one that I did it with yeah I'm thinking baked earth is this and then around the outside here I did the bark color yeah it's probably what I did I just gotta feel it out, huh? Hmm. I wonder. I have random pencil number 34. Um, this is one of my gold faber faber castells. I think if I remember correctly, it's called Indian Red. Anyway. Hold on just a second. All right, gotta sharpen that up. So, go in here and do some of the little cracks and crevices. Like I said, I think I used polychromos on the other one, but any pencil will work. Just gotta make sure that it's got a nice sharp little point for those really fine veins. Just like that. Bring some up here. It's not quite dry up there. That's all right. Hmm. And then. finishing touch to abracadabra turn it into a super shiny awesome gem would be the highlight
just like so. So there you have it. I'm going to grab my blender pencil. So that's what I use to kind of clean up the edges of these. You know, when it's not still wet, preferably. And it's only like almost halfway damp now. But there you go. That's how I've been doing these. And I hope you like it. I'll go ahead and finish off this one. Still a little bit damp, but as long as you can write on it, you're okay. Not damp enough for me to be worried about it. And we'll get over here and get our gel pen. Excuse me, goodness, I have the hiccups now. And there we have it. These are our gorgeous gems. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little intense tutorial. And I hope you go and do some cool gems. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.